Hello everyone, by now this game should officially have launched globally. Today we're going to be giving you a beginner's guide on it and maybe might even be a little bit intermediate, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through things here as I normally play the game, kind of give you an idea of what's going on with it. Now a lot of this stuff you might not have unlocked yet if you are just starting today. I've been playing for about a month now, so this is what you kind of see for that point of it. But we're going to pretty much go in here. The first thing you're going to see here is this battle screen. This is going to be kind of what you see when you're starting off. So when you go into the battle screen here, we can pick up to five of them to put onto this screen. So we can move heroes around just by holding on to them. It can be a little tricky, but you can see we can drag it over. It will kind of swap. This guy up here in the front with the orange next to him, that's going to be who we're attacking inside the game. Now, if we went and say, for example, pulled that one off there and switched it with, let's go for a fire AOE here, or actually not a fire, but... Um, that's going to be a human. You can see that one's going to be hitting for the back on it. So use that kind of to your judgment of where to place these things. Now, obviously you want to have your tanks and stuff in the front and your intelligence, your supports, things like that in the back. We'll just go and drag this one back here and we'll do the battle start. So a lot of this is kind of learning which characters work best against other characters and even positioning too. So if we end up dying here, what I'll do is go back and retry again, move some characters around on it to see if it works any better. Usually what I do is focus to see, okay, who's dying first. Sometimes I'll have to go through, pull one of these damage dealers out or a healer out and throw a third tank in. So they're not all focusing right on those two in the front. You can see we do have a health bar that's going to be our red one there. And then the yellow one that you see is going to be for kind of our ultimate like you see right here. I'm playing at times two speed right now. I really suggest when you first start off only going at times one so you can see what type of buffs and nerfs are getting applied to the characters on the screen. So right now that blue one is going to be an additional damage buff on it. But we beat that stage. We got the basic rewards. If you look over here, we have this 12 hour chest. If we click on that, that's going to be the other things we get for kind of hitting the milestones of every 15, 20, 25 and so on. Now, if you need to switch up inside battle of your gear and stuff, runes, you can hold down on the icon down the bottom and you can see right here. We can unequip all if we need to. We can auto equip. We can even click on the item, do a reset enhance. This will give us everything that we spent on it back to us so we can go and apply it to other gear. The way I play the game is I invest all of my resources into my five heroes. And if I need to change a hero, I'll go reset everything, move everything over to them, and then I'll go and start enhancing them to get the levels of those things up. When it comes to equipping the gear, it's gonna be based by the secondary class down here. You can see that this one's agility. The other one here is strength. And then I believe there's a third one, which is going to be intelligence. Let's go and find one here. Yep, there we go, intelligence. And I believe that's all there is for the actual gear classes on them. You could see for the actual classes themselves, we have a dealer, we have supporter, we're going to have a healer, and then there's going to be the tank one on it too, which let's find one here, tanker. So four classes, those don't really matter too much when it comes to gear. It's going to be the ones that are on the right. You can click on the enemy players too to see what they have for stats and buffs and so on. You can see this one is a rare here. This is a human. And if you look up here in the top left, this is going to kind of tell us what the racial advantages are. So you can see here that the light green is going to be the undead and the undead is going to do an extra 20% damage to the humans. The humans will do an extra 20% damage to the horde and then the horde to the elves, elves to the undead, kind of a circle. The yellow is gonna be light and the purple is gonna be darkness. Now I'm not 100% certain, I think they're just gonna do 20% damage to each other on it there, maybe one negates the other. I'm not 100% certain on that, but you will probably won't be getting a lot of these heroes till late game there. They're very difficult to get. You might have one that's gonna get in your soul link, which we'll talk about in a second, but just know that there is these racial advantages. So if you are struggling on a certain set of mobs, go and try to get this racial advantage in there. The other thing is too, is we're gonna have it if we pair up multiple heroes of the same class. So. For example, here you can see that we have three of the elves, so that's going to give us an additional 12% attack and HP. And if you look down the bottom, those light and darkness are going to consider to be any class. So if we have three elves, we throw a light on there, that's going to give us that four person buff. That difference in the damage number that you see here, the 568 to the 785, that doesn't always really matter. It kind of just uses it as a gauge. It really depends on the characters that you're using and their buffs and their abilities that they have inside the game. I would probably say that a star level is more important than the level itself, but it all really depends on how you're using them and how you group them. 
The second thing you're probably gonna unlock inside the game is gonna be these Towers of Souls. And this is just another spot where you can go and get more resources. Now we have coins, we have these uh, soul fragments. We get 100 soul fragments, we're gonna be able to grab a new hero out of it, or a new draw out of it. The soul stones will be used for heroes breakthrough. Once again, we'll get into that in a second. But just like everything else here, we're gonna be able to go in and this is a spot where we can get different resources. There is a good amount of um, hero shards that we can get to go and upgrade or draw new heroes on it. But you can see same thing again, just basic battle inside the game here. If you need to, you can hit the pause button. We can do a forfeit, retry, continue. We'll just cancel out on this because we already know how the battling goes. If we go back to the home screen though, you can see this is kind of like our timed rewards of you know how long we were away from for before collecting on it. And if we click over on the right, this is gonna kind of be our daily and weekly achievements, missions. These are something you wanna to try to do every single day because it is a good amount of gems that you get out of it. The final reward for the daily one will give you VIP points and you can see I'm a VIP four up top up there. It's pretty much gonna give you additional stats inside the game. Let's see if we can find out where to click on it right there. So as we go up to the next level, it's just kind of a way to say, hey, you're gonna get more re auto rewards, more uh, magic stones. It's just like a nice little thing. If you do spend inside the game, this obviously increases a lot more. Currently, I am free to play at the moment though. And if we click over on this guy on the left, this is just gonna kind of be progress rewards for going and beating that main chapter. So a lot of good stuff to get out of here too. I always forget if the Tower of Souls is a second thing you unlock or if it's this Cave of Abyss, but this is another nice way to kind of go and get some rewards. We're going to use torches to go through. If we just click on this, you'll see that we kind of go through and we explore, we find some chests. This time we got a boss right away and we can go and battle this. Now, when I do go and battle, there'll be a number down on the bottom right to show what's the highest amount of damage I did. Based by how much damage we do is going to depend how many of these chests we get up top. The higher the chest level, the better rewards. And this is usually a good way to get some gear. So my highest number I've done so far is 2.1 million for damage. I probably won't get that close. I wasn't paying attention to who I was using when I did that damage on it, but it's kind of a good way to gauge to say, hey, you know, if you hit that high number, keep mind of what you use for those heroes. And there's a good chance if you go back in with them again, you'll keep on getting those really good rewards. Usually you'll just breeze through this thing to a point and then this thing just gets so strong that it's just gonna start one shotting you. So you can see there, we got our rewards. We did get a bunch of these beast hearts. We'll show you that in a second here. But as we go through, we're just gonna find a lot of things and it all depends on how many uh, those torches we have. So we could stop that. Um, I'm gonna just back out of that. And if we go over to our actual support tab, which is all the way on the bottom left, this is where we're gonna have rankings based by the person that does the uh, the first time achieving, let's say stage 120 here, or in this situation, uh, Cake is at 2216. When he finally goes and beats the next one, which will be 2250, everybody on this server will get 50 gems for that. If we go over to Alchemy, this is where we can go and cash in our gear, dismantle. We're gonna use these points we acquire from this to upgrade our other gear and levels. You can set which ones you want it to have that auto select for dismantling. I really suggest start off with doing normal. As you get overpopulated with the advanced ones, then you can add those and then advanced plus. I'm getting close to the point where I can finally add rare on here, which the higher the one that we go and dismantle, you can see here is gonna give more points or more resources we can use to upgrade. There's also runes that we can dismantle in here, and this is something that's gonna take a little while before you unlock these, so we won't go over them too much, but we will go over them in a second. The shop is gonna be the other thing though, so this is where we're gonna have our daily shop on it. You can go purchase thing. You always wanna at least purchase the things with gold in here because that is gonna be one of our daily tasks there to you know, go through and purchase something from it. Also with the weekly one. So I try to keep an eye of how much money I have and at least what I need to, or to get those things. I really don't buy too much stuff with gems in here unless there's an event going on and I absolutely need something out of here. The soul shop, this is gonna be where we go and when we recycle our heroes that we don't use, we can then use the resources of that to buy new heroes. Now, when we do finally buy one of these things, uh, we don't have enough right now, but if I went to go and purchase it with the soul fragments, that's gonna end up here inside our bag. So if you bought one and you're like, I didn't get it, you gotta go up here you gotta click on one of these blue blocks and then you can do use and then it'll pop up into your hero queue. The beast shop here, you can see that's what we just got the tokens for in the cave of abyss. 
This Canon here is very strong, something that everybody likes to use. I'm using them right now. I would say if you see any chances to grab one of your heroes that's in your soul links, you definitely want to do it. Getting held up by not having your soul link at a certain level can just totally hold you back inside the game. Once again, we'll go over in a second. There's a lot inside this game at this point for everything that I have unlocked. Arena tokens, once again, once you unlock the arena, this will be where you spend in there. And if you do swipe over, which is one that it's kind of hidden in there, you really don't know us at first, but you can swipe over and there is the Sanctum Shop. So both Guild and Craft are coming soon, so you won't be able to unlock those at all yet. Unless they do add this tomorrow when the game globally launches. Now our Soul Link, when you start off, you're gonna have five heroes here. Whatever the lowest level of this hero is, is gonna be able to match that level for everything else. So you can see my lowest I have is 120. We do have some at 140, but all these heroes are at 120 right now. I could go remove any one of these heroes here, and if I go and remove them, I will have to wait an hour before I can put a new one in there, and it'll go up to that 120. You can go and purchase some with gems. I haven't done that. I'm just kind of going and seeing what I can do with progress. An hour really isn't that long if you go and say, hey, I'm just gonna go take this one out, put this one in, wait the hour, come back. It's not the end of the world. But unfortunately, you cannot change these five. Keep that in mind. So as I said, if you ever see any of those top five inside anything that you can purchase, even if you don't need it right away, I really think it's a good idea to get it. That's just my own personal opinion. Other people might tell you otherwise, but for me, that's where I was getting held up inside the game. All right, Recycle Heroes. Anything that comes out as a three stars is pretty much gonna be trash for you. So don't even bother using them. Don't feel bad. You wanna get rid of every single three star. I don't even think they'll let you even fuse them if we go down to them. Let's see here. I don't even think, yeah, they don't even show up. So all the three stars are is pretty much a way that you can get currency to go over, use it in the shop to buy fragments of another hero. When it comes to fusing, anything that's a four star is gonna get turned into fusing into a five star. Now I would say don't go and fuse anything from five star on until you can go and take another one of your purples, your epics. That's really what this game is all about. You're all about using your epics. You're not gonna use any of your rares. You're not gonna use any of your three stars. You're only gonna use your epics, which are the purples. So keep them all at five stars. We'll go over fusing in another video because it is pretty confusing here, but you can see here, if I click on this guy, I need two of the five stars of matching ones and I need a three star of anything. I don't wanna burn up this epic here. Other people might do it, but I'm waiting to save my uh, my rares and waste those versus wasting an epic because these epics can be a little bit tough to get matching ones on or at least get it to this level. But the game has been very generous so far with giving rewards inside the game. Now the star levels themselves, they tend to be very confusing. So three stars, we have four stars, we have five stars. Once we get one of these gold stars with just one star on it, like this guy right here, that is a six star. Two gold stars is a seven star. Three gold stars is an eight star, four gold stars, nine star. Right now, this guy right here sitting at five stars. When we take him to a single red, that's gonna be an 11 star. Now, when things get merged and stuff, it will get announced on the server. You can see people right here, save successfully fuse a 10 star Tanya. So just if you're ever kind of seeing those things, you see the red one there is 11 star. It's a little bit confusing if nobody tells you about it, but still, that's just kind of how the game works here. So if you see people talking about wait till you get to eight star, they're actually talking about three gold stars. And summon hero, this is where we're gonna go in and summon, I just literally burned up every single one. I would say don't use any of the one single summons for 300, unless you actually have a shard that's sitting in there or it's your free one, it's the only time you wanna be using the actual one summon. Always go for the 10, it's gonna be, you get 10 for the price of nine, there is also down the bottom here, the select summons at this point in the game, even for me, I think I've only had it maybe a 10 pull once on these and then maybe a five pull on our time, but you're pretty much guaranteed whatever race it is. You can go through and select which one you want based by spending 500 gems, but it never seems to be the lighter darkness. It's always gonna be the four main races that you can get out of it. At least that's what I've seen. But even though the times that I have pulled out of this, you can have it set for Horde, for example, and still get a light or darkness out of them. So keep that in mind. But obviously, if you get a Horde one, you're not gonna be grabbing any elves, humans, or undead. 
and based by how many things you've pulled on the bottom there, you will get fragments for both rare and epic heroes. We're sitting at 213 right now. I've already had it twice where I've maxed it, so with playing in a month, I've already pulled 713 times. And that doesn't include the fragments that you've gotten inside the game too. Over on events here, you probably will have a beginner's event starting. Um, I also had the Soul Companions one, which is saying, you know, acquire 80 epic heroes. So I have four days. I really need to get this because this is going to give one of those light dark heroes inside there. And that's definitely something you want to have. If there is other events inside the game, you will see it down the bottom there by where that beginning training is. First purchase top up on things. You do have the mall. This is where you go and buy stuff. The daily shop will offer free 20 fragments for a rare hero there. And everything else is pretty much a purchase one. Although the promotion one, if we go over to the pass on it, you can see all those check marks there. That's where I'm able to get free stuff based by reaching my level account. As I said, I've maintained free to play at this point. Hopefully I won't get to the point of spending because once you do start spending, it's very easy to keep going at it. So I think the arena was the next thing that might have gotten unlocked after that. But once again, don't remember. You can see here we're ranked 185 at the moment. You can set up a defense deck inside here to prevent people from, you know, killing you. But if you do go move your gear around and stuff, you want to definitely go back in here and change things. I am at 516 right now. You'll find a lot of people slacking on this when they go and do transfer gear around or put everything on another hero that this will drop down and then that's a good time to attack. Now, just instead of going in right and attacking these numbers here, I highly suggest you go to your match record, go down to the bottom and see who beat you last on it. So this is a good way we can go and get revenge on them and get even more trophies. You can see here, if we go to revenge, we can see where they're at. They're probably a little bit overpowered. I don't like that army I'm going to be going up against. So I'll go and take a look at the next one and just see if there's anybody that I even have a chance or if there's anybody that's kind of slacking on their power at the moment. So you can see here, this one, when they attacked us, they were at uh, 547. Now if I click on them, they're at 533. So we'll go ahead and attack them and see how we do. So you can see we won there. Now we are going to get arena points and we are going to get some of the tokens we can use there or arena coins to go over in that shop and purchase heroes from there. As we promote up every time of the season there, you can see we are going to get rewards inside this. If I click down the bottom, you can see here, we'll get those rewards. The big thing people try to go for is to get to platinum because at that point, that's where we're going to get shards to get a fragment of Sanders right now. Typically, it's going to change every single season and this season's gonna expire in seven days. But that's the goal everybody tries to get to, is get up into Platinum and get those free hero shards. The Secret Sanctum is where we go and get those runes. It used to be a lot different. We used to just have one of them. You'd get a lot of good legendary stuff out of it. They later changed it, so now we have to go and work our way up on it. So if we go in, as we go and progress, we're gonna be able to, number one, grab runes, and then you see that yellow thing right there. That's gonna kind of give us like a buff to all our heroes. So we'll just get over to that real quick. As we get further into this, the teams we go up against will be stronger. And whatever we're left at with health, when we leave this one, we'll be going in with that matching health into the next one. So if you have somebody that's just barely alive, when you go into the next round, they'll be barely alive too. But once all these ones die, we can then go and switch them out for other ones, move the gear around and so on. There is the fountain that you'll see up over in the top left here in a second that will revive two heroes or heal everybody in your party. But you can see here, we're just gonna grab this one on the right. These are the best ones right here, the purple that I've seen so far. So all dead aliens are resurrected with 100% HP at their sixth round. This is the one I always tend to go for because it really is OP. And if you need to, if you wanna give an Argo, this is the only other time I've really spent gems in the game is 500 to this. It revives every single hero that you died. So if you're really trying for one of those runes, this isn't a bad way, but I'd only really do this if you're trying to get legendary runes. The Ancestral Tomb is going to be the last thing I think you unlock in this. And this is going to be where you can just only go in with a specific race. So you can see here we have to go in with five humans. And this is a great thing to get rewards out of it too. You can see this one here is going to give some shards or summon stones, I should say. This one here will give fragments and diamonds. Once again, fragments and then the soul stones and room crystal and diamond. So this is a fun way to kind of just go through and just get even more rewards out of the game. I haven't played this one too much, but I'll usually just go and grind it when I'm stuck on everything else. So the last thing I can think of is the heroes tab here. So you can see anytime we unlock a new hero, we're gonna go up to this guide. You can click on them and there'll be a hundred gems down the bottom right that we can go and collect. So you can go over, click on the guide, and if they're new, you'll see that little orange icon next to them. And then you go on there, down the bottom right, there'll be something that you can go and get 100 gems. 
As far as the engraving on these things, this is still brand new to me, I haven't gotten it. I think you need to get your hero to 11 stars before you can even use this, and I don't have any, I'm right on the cusp of it there. As far as our top five for our soul link though, you can see we're gonna have every 20 levels, you can go and do a breakthrough. This one's gonna require a three star on it, and it's pretty much where I'm hung up. But this one here, you can see, I could go and break this through if needed, but unfortunately, or actually I can break this through. So I can do that. If I go and click on this here, it will break through, and then we can go and take it up another 20 levels. So that's gonna require a three star. Now, if we do have one that is at three star, I still won't be able to upgrade it to the next level. You can only be 20 levels higher of your lowest. So I gotta at least wait till the R ones get up to 140 before I can break through those ones and take them up to 160. The only other thing I can really think of right now is these legendary runes. If I wanna go and swap and move this to one of the other players, it's gonna cost me 200 gems to go and move this thing here. So if I went and clicked on one that didn't have it at least, let's go here, replace, click on this, replace. Do I wanna switch 200 runes? No. The other thing we can do with the runes too is I highly suggest you wait till you get the legendary ones is we can go click on those and select a single portion of it and we can go and change the option and try to get a different uh, different buff out of it here. So we'll do this one and really we want to get those purples or get those reds on it. The final one on it is going to require you to go and dismantle a legendary rune and this is kind of like the holy grail of these runes right here to get that final buff is something really good but you're paying with other runes in order to get it. The only other thing I'm really seeing on here is this little hourglass here. This is just gonna be another spot where you can get additional rewards, but I think this is about a good sum of what's going on inside the game. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments there. I'll help out as much as I can. We'll have plenty more guides on this game too. And if you want, join up on my Discord. I have a spot open inside there. There is also a Discord for the game currently. If you click up here in settings, you can see it right up over there. So. Hopefully you found this helpful. Like I said, have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and remember, I pick my butt.